Mornings on 2 is hitting the road. Today, we took a quick drive south from Oakland on 880 to explore Union City. I tried them one time, and now I'm addicted. <laughs> Hungry? We have you covered. Sweet treats and savory options at our first stop. And a chef who decided to leave New York City behind to come home and launch his own restaurant. I wanted to try to bring a culinary movement out here. From food as a way to bring the community together to food as a way to help those in need. We'll introduce you to a woman who knows what it's like to sleep in her van. Now that she has a place to call home, she is giving back. I had to come back. I don't think I could say that night if I did. And how well do you know Union City? Dakota? No. No? Yes. It's Dakota. It's Dakota? Yeah. Really? Zip Trip Trivia is quizzing people on all things Union City as Mornings on 2 takes you on a zip trip. It is a rare city in the East Bay that can preserve its small town feel when it's right in the middle of everything. Good morning and welcome to gorgeous Union City. 18 square miles, 70,000 people, a whole lot of fun, beautiful city parks, great schools. People who live here just love it and we are here to share with you why. Good morning and thanks for joining us. KTVU here at the East Plaza Fountain, the Dancing Ladies as the locals call it. We brought the whole band out for this zip trip. We have South Castaneda standing by to bring us some of the best sips and bites Union City has to offer. Frank Malicote stumped quite a few people with his zip trip trivia, but we have to start with Claudine Wong because you're in the middle of a very active scene, Claudine. I've never felt safer, Garcia. <laughs> Look behind me. you got the Dragon's Den. They've come out this morning, and it's busy. I mean, you've got everything going out here from a little kickboxing, some Muay Thai. You've got self-defense. And look, I mean, they are busy. And then it's not just that. We've also got boxing. I mean, it is very busy out here. Really, the, the greatest thing about these zip trips is we get to highlight all these community groups that are really doing amazing things and so a part of this community from the kids to the music. And Frank, I mean, this morning, they're working out to a little music. That they are. Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malicote. Uh, we got the band Eternity. It's 11, 12, and 13-year-olds, all from the greater Union City area. And they are playing away this morning. We will talk to the band momentarily, and we're going to find out who the heck put the Union in Union City. A little zip trip trivia coming your way shortly. But first, Sal, we got to eat, buddy. We do have to eat. We do have to drink. I'm here at Hippie's Brew. Uh, Hippie's Brew has a couple of locations here in Union City, and I got my jolt. Let me tell you, I needed one after that Warriors win. So we're going to talk about food and drink. We're also going to talk to a native son of Union City who started a radio career 10 years ago in an unusual way. He's sitting right there, kind of waiting. Hello, Daryl, the Guru Johnson. Yeah, there he is. Uh, you might hear him on the radio, but he got his start in radio in an unusual way. He's from Union City. He talks about Union City all the time. So, Gasia, we're going to hear about him. We're also going to talk about, of course, the places that went to eat and drink. You're going to want to stay tuned for that. Absolutely, Sal. Thank you. We'll see you again in just a second for what's happening right now. And we're going to look ahead to the future of Union City with its mayor in a minute. But first, let's go back to the very beginnings of this beautiful city. Though the city officially incorporated and became Union City in 1959, the area has history dating well back over a century before that. Throughout the 1800s, pieces of this community were known as New Haven, Alvarado, and Dakota. When Alameda County was officially created in 1853, the county seat was New Haven, a piece of land that's now part of Union City. As for Alvarado, it's another one of the towns that merged to form Union City. It's named after Juan Alvarado, the Mexican governor of California from 1837 to 1842. Early industries in this part of the East Bay focused on steel, sugar, and salt. Alvarado and Dakota officially merged in 1959 to form Union City. That same year, James Logan High School was built. At that time, the city's population was just over 6,000. It's now top 70,000, with about 13,000 students in the New Haven Unified School District. Today, the industry is expected to see the most growth over the next several decades include health, education, and finance. And don't forget about Red Vines. Yes, the American Licorice Company has been making that candy in Union City since 1971. 
I mean, there's a lot more than candy happening in this great town, and we have the leader of Union City here with us this morning. I would like to welcome to our Zip Trip Mayor, Carol Dutra Vernacci. Thanks so much for being with us. I am so thrilled that Channel 2 is here today because we are the hidden gem in the Bay Area. And your intro really gave a, a, a good definition. We're central in the Bay Area. It is a hidden gem. We are in one of the most unknown parts of the city and yet right. the most beautiful, as you pointed out as well, the three dancing ladies behind right. us. Right. For those that have never been to Union City, this is right next to our BART station. And this I heard the is... BART train go by a minute okay, ago. Okay, <laughs> there you go, exactly. And you also mentioned our 18 square miles. What people don't realize is our inhabited part is only nine square miles. The rest of Union City is in our beautiful hills, yeah. which I hope you're going to be able to get a shot of later on. I think we're showing that to people now. We sent Sky oh, Fox up okay. above your fair Perfect. city not yes. too long ago. Let's talk about the fact that Union City flies a little bit under the radar. This can be good and bad, I'm imagining. It, being under the radar is good and bad. The bad part of it is I have to spend a lot of my time explaining Union City and how wonderful we are. But the good part is that we are wonderful and I do have something to talk about. As was mentioned, Sal's already gone around town and checked out all the wonderful restaurants and locations that we have. And we are a very active city. I'm so thrilled that today in the background you're able to shoot at one of our martial arts schools and you've got the car clubs that folks are going to get to see in a while. Yeah. So if somebody wants something to do and still have that small town feel, this is the place to come. I've lived here my entire life yeah. and so I've seen the growth and in that growth it's fantastic because we are a diverse city. A so fantastically as diverse city. Fantastically diverse and as all these folks from around the world have been coming in, I've been so thrilled to be somebody that's been here my entire life to welcome them, make them feel at home. A proud graduate of James Logan High sitting right next to me. When you talk about Union City being a connector, what do you mean in that way? Well, a connector, it's it's about networking. And because we are centrally located, our city has wonderful connections in the Bay Area. As an elected official with folks from all around the Bay Area, around the country and around the world for that matter. And Anybody that wants to come here and get involved or learn, all they have to do is pick up the phone and call me or somebody at City Hall, one of the other council members. We're all about connectivity and networking. Like I said, it is fantastic that you have been able to maintain that small town feel. I, I'm driving in, I came down uh, through Hayward yes. and I saw some new construction and then I saw some beautiful mid-century buildings and I thought, oh, I'm so glad it's all still here in Union City. Well, Mayor, thank you so much for joining us. Third term as mayor. Third term. If, if you look ahead and real quick, what what are, you, what, what are your hopes for your city? Just a few seconds we have left. My hopes are that we can continue to move forward with the housing that we need yeah. for our residents as well as the entire Bay Area yeah. and that we do get the positive recognition to keep that rolling in because we are in the news quite a bit for positive events happening in town. Well, you got the whole hour, Mayor. Thank you so much for joining us. The Mayor of Union City, Carol Dutra Fernacci, thanks for being with us on the Zip Trip as we really do just start to kick things off and oh, to your beautiful town. If we can, I'd like to go straight back to our Claudine Wong because again, Claudine, you've showed us some incredible things already this morning and you're about to highlight an incredible woman. Yes, Dacia, you know, what a privilege to tell the story of this woman who went through so much as a mother of four children with a family experiencing homelessness. And her story in our hometown spotlight segment is about how Union City came to her aid and also how she today continues to give back. I'm so excited to share her story with you. here in Union City by middle and high schoolers. Yes, please, and thank you. Thank you to the Eternity Band under the direction of Aaron Q, entertaining us all, all morning long. People are stopping by with their coffee, listening and taking in all the gorgeous sights 
and sounds here at the Dancing Ladies Fountain. Our zip trip this morning is shining a light on Union City in the heart of the Bay Area right here in Alameda County. If you haven't been, you need to come down. We're going to entice you through the hour with fun things to do, great things to eat, and stories that will warm your heart. Claudine Wong is standing by, and Claudine, you had the privilege of meeting a woman from Union City who found herself in need and then eventually was able to help others herself. That's right, Garcia. Really an incredible story. I want to show you where we are before we get to that story in a moment. Uh, I've climbed up a little bit, not to the top of what's known as the jungle here, which is essentially a play structure. But I wanted to show you this because this structure, if you talk about Union City, people know it. They talk about it. But it's more than just a play structure. It's it's a symbol. It's a landmark built for the housing that was going to be built here and for the station district. And when we talk about this next story, it is about family, it's about children, and it's about housing. It's about a woman who found herself experiencing homelessness, how Union City came to help, and how now she continues to give back. Then I look at you, and the world's all right with me. It is a kitchen filled with gratitude, and it is food made with love. I mean, the dough, it takes about an hour to rise, and then I'll make the dough. Um, I'll add the, I'll break it down into um, the separate pizzas. And then I'll cook that, and then I have to be out of here by 7.45 at the latest. That's because at 8 p.m., Caravan opens. It's a Union City program that gives people a safe place to park and sleep overnight. Tammy knows that program well, because in 2021, she and her four children were experiencing homelessness and spent their evenings at Caravan sites. I think people have this narrative that everyone that ends up homeless is a drug addict. They think they made bad decisions and now they're here. Like I was a victim of a crime and I ended up there. For a year, this van was home. And then this seat back here, it completely lays down and goes into the floor. And then that's so the bed would go from here to here. And then our refrigerator was over here and we had a pantry over there. Having a safe place to sleep, she says, was a relief. Caravan was so, so, so amazing. We would get out in the middle of the night and like jump rope and we'd run and we'd skate every day after school and we'd, it was just amazing. It was so healing, like, my God, this is what's meant to be. We're meant to be free. It was a chance to get back on their feet. Yeah, so I'd plug in this generator. We'd sew our outfit and go out and sew masks and sell it. She even cooked in that van. But most importantly, she kept her family together in that van. But it was always meant to be temporary. Someone asked me what was the desire of my heart and I said, my desire is to get my kids in a place. And that's the first time I'd ever said out loud, this is what I want. It was like everything in the universe just moved to give me exactly what was the desire of my heart. After a year and a lot of help, she moved her family into this home. Just one look at you, and I know it's gonna be. And yet, she never forgets where she's been. And so most nights, she's here cooking. A lovely day. packing up the food before driving to a caravan site. In my life, I just believe if I've been somewhere and I know that pain or I know that struggle, and the main thing was like I cooked when I was there. So I was like, who's cooking now? Who's helping them? And there's a lot of older people. And that like crushes my soul because they should be somewhere enjoying life, someone taking care of them. They've paved the way and it's not their time to just lay in a car. But until they are somewhere else, Tammy says she'll be here with warm food made with love. So I had to come back. I don't think I could sleep at night if I did it. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I can't tell you why. Maybe it's simply because she has always given back to those in need. Or maybe it's because Tammy Rizell knows what it means to sleep here at night. So there are multiple caravan sites in Union City. Jesus Garcia runs the whole program. You just have to contact him and register and get all set up for that. There are 13 to 15 cars, he says, at, at different sites throughout the city at night. And so really such an important program that has seen profound success. And Gossie, when you talk about someone like Tammy, she's 
amazing. She was selling items on Etsy that she was sewing in that van. She ran for office. She's in education. She is very busy, and she just has this heart that continues to give back and give back and try to make a difference. Really incredible. I'm I mean, Claudine, you've heard me say this a hundred times, but when I say if somebody makes you dinner, it means they love you, and she's the perfect example of that. Claudine Wong, another wonderful story. Yes. Thank you so much. All right, I know that Sal Castaneda has been itching to talk sports all morning, and we're about to do that with, with a man who got into radio kind of on a fluke, Sal. Yeah, I'm here with uh, Daryl the Guru Johnson, who grew up in Union City. One of the reasons that I know this is because he talks about it all the time on the radio. This is the perfect morning, man, for you to be with us because the Warriors just won their fourth championship. Incredible. You're doing your dream job, but most people don't know because you're a veteran now. Yeah. You've been on for 10 years. Most people don't know how you got in uh, the radio station. How did you do that? So uh, there's been one station in the Bay Area you know forever. And then a new station came in 2012, and they had a contest called the Lucky Break. So it was going to be somebody's lucky break, about 200 uh, participants. And uh, lo and behold, your boy won. I was the last one standing, and I'm still I'm here today because of that. So I'll never forget it. Definite, definite career changer and game changer. So I'm juiced. I don't know if I should feel good for you or bad because you work with my boy Steinman. Yeah, my guy, our guy, kind of, who can be kind of uh, yeah. curmudgeon -y, Yeah. Right. But you guys make a great combo. Talk about Union City because before we ever thought about doing a zip trip here, you always talked highly about this place. Oh. You grew up here, and there's a lot of new stuff. I found a lot of good restaurants. Tell me what it was like growing up here. It was unique. Uh, it was a place that where in between Fremont, Hayward, where's Union City, the East Bay, one high school, James Logan, where I went and graduated. And uh, we have a lot of uh, famous people to come out of uh, Union City. Eddie House, you know, went on to yep. play in the NBA. Roy Williams, he played the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Darren Lewis played for the Giants. Daryl Bird. But uh, Union City, again, is unique. Uh, a lot of nationalities, all of it. So from that standpoint, Sal, you get to deal and uh, learn that part of life of how to deal with others, uh, you know, a big melting pot. So I'm proud to be from here. And, uh, you know, we always have it. We call it the U. That's the nickname for Union City, Sal. The, the U. U. Yeah, the U. U. U -N -E. U-N-E. Yeah, All right. U. Well, I'm glad you're here. Now, briefly, we have to talk about the Warriors. Oh, my God. All right. So uh, last night, uh, yesterday, you did your show live from okay. the sports bar. He's our pub. He, yeah, he's our pub in San Francisco. And, uh, you know, they won, obviously, last night. How are you feeling being part of this coverage? Uh, you know, you're going to be part of the ongoing coverage. Here we are. It's, uh, it's not Sunday, but I feel blessed. And I'm blessed because I get to cover a team that won its fourth championship in eight years now. And this year was different because there was so much doubt. What's Clay going to be? Can Curry do it? The youngsters and all that evolved into what we saw culminate last night in Boston. You're going to get mad at me. I kind of wanted them to go to a game seven and win it at home, but you wanted no part of that, I want, right? No, you know what? I am going right. to get mad at you. Okay. How dare you? How dare, I'll try to Father's be, Day. I'll try to be Steinmetz. Yeah. That's an idiotic take. There it is. You got him down. <laughs> now, he took credit for this, too. Right. I know. He's, okay. it, because, it was because of Steinmetz that we're doing there this interview, according to him. Well, Daryl, you know what? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for repping Union City. Oh, because, you know, I think a lot of people... You know, they, they, I don't know what they think. They think everyone is from San Francisco, Oakland, or right. San Jose. You're from the U. The U. And, and thank yeah. you guys for being so hospitable. A little later on, I'm going to show you and everyone else uh, what I found to eat here. And you guys are not going love starving, it. let me tell I you. I love it. Thank you for having me. And uh, we, I love my city. Thanks I, for having I, it's me. Glad for being yeah. here. Gacia, we have someone here who is a hometown favorite for sure. I love it. And we have another young man here who's repping the U, another proud graduate of James Logan High School, Daniel Ricoder of Forte Athletics. Thanks for being with us. Your skill is the jump rope, and it's not the kind we all did in elementary school. You're about to show us your skills, but first, a lot of people picked up jump rope during the pandemic, myself included. It's a lot harder than it looks. It is. Yeah. It is so fun, though, and there's always more to learn. There's always a new challenge to achieve. 
It's there's endless possibilities. Is that why you chose jump rope for your skills? Exactly. It never gets boring. Okay, well never. look, let, let's not talk, let us do it. So I'm gonna let's step out it. of the way here. Don't want to get whacked in the face. Daniel Ricoder of Forte Athletics. He is huge, by the way, on Instagram. So if you want to check him out online, like millions of views. I mean, I joke that I had to try to jump rope for two minutes and it left me wiped out. But take a look. Daniel is getting props from the people here in his hometown of Union City. His mom emailed me to say my son is amazing and I think we can all agree if you want to see more check out Daniel on Instagram awesome all right Frank Malicote I know that you're a busy guy you're with some pretty amazing vehicles where you are you're going to take us to our next part of our zip trip Frank where did Union City get its name I have no idea so they put them together and I thought maybe that's why they put Union City yeah yeah well you're wrong <laughs> Well, she's kind of right, actually, but there's a lot of great history here in Union City, so we're going to put the locals to the task and find out, do they really know that much about their town? Also, we're going to introduce you to one of the drivers from uh, Classic Cruisers USA, 13 of the most beautiful cars all on display right here in Union City, and it's all coming up next. All right. Are you kidding me? Can you imagine pulling up to the KTVU newsroom in this baby? I mean, our Frank Malicote is in heaven. Yes, he's in Union City, but he's in Union City heaven because, Frank, I know you love all things on wheels, and you're about to showcase some pretty amazing vehicles where you are. I guess so. This is a pretty sleek T-Bird, uh, 1957 T-Bird, by the way. The same one that was in American Graffiti with Suzanne Summers. And I have the owner, Mike Foley, is part of Classic Cruisers USA. And uh, Mike, you've only had this car about a year, right? About a year. About a year. And what does it, I mean, what's it mean to you? It's like a, it's like a child, isn't it? It is. I mean, I had one of these uh, when I was in high school as a junior. And it's just going back to high school again. You know, it's the same type of car, same car. Love driving it, love going to shows, love talking to everybody. Yeah. My dad had a 64 Olds Cutlass, and he, he always loved the look. As you drove down the boulevard of life, people were like, hey, nice car, right? Well, yeah, you got to keep your head on a swivel because everybody's giving you a thumbs up. So, oh, yeah. you know, you hear horns honking and stuff. You kind of look around. And, and a pink one. Or I guess you're not calling it pink, right? Not pink. It's dusk rose. Dusk rose. <laughs> okay, very good. You can be in trouble with my wife if you call it pink. Well, tell us about your club and... Uh, and what the club, what it means to you guys to just get out, have a little camaraderie and share That's our what stories. it is. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, we meet in uh, Newark every Friday at Dino's. Uh, you know, a bunch of guys come down. We talk cars. We talk to everything else, too. It's, it's just nice to get together, get out, you know, and do something. All right. I agree. Well, it's a gorgeous car. Enjoy it. By the way, you guys awake over there? Yeah. All right. The car club. Very nice. Classic Cruisers USA every Friday night at Dino's uh, in Newark. By the way, did you ever wonder how Union City became Union City? And there's a lot of history here. So I took to the streets to find out what the locals really know about their town. What three towns border the town of Union City? Um, it would be Fremont. 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 Yes. Uh, Freeman. Yes, okay. Yes. That border at Fremont. Fremont's one. Hayward. Yes. <laughs> Hayward. Hayward. Hayward's one. It works good. And Hayward. It's good. Okay. And Hayward. Hayward. Yeah. Let's see. This okay. is pretty easy. That's it. Okay, I got That's you. Perfect. <laughs> Would Newark be one? I don't know. What do you think? Final answer. Newark. Newark's good. And, uh, a Newark. Newark. Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Newark, uh, Fremont, and Hayward. <laughs> Very good. One of America's most beloved candies is actually made in Union City. Can you name the candy? Whack, whack, whack. I, it's right over there, too. <laughs> yeah, right over there. Ay, ay, ay. Peanut jelly. Peanut jelly. Peanut yeah. jelly. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what seeds. That's a fun candy. Yeah, I'm thinking C's candy. C's candy. 
No, that's over in South San Francisco. I'm thinking licorice. You're thinking licorice, and you're right. Uh, licorice. Yeah. Where did you get yeah. licorice from? It just came off the top of my no. head, yeah. but I just no. know that. Yeah, my mom used to work there um, at the American Licorice Factory. All right. Are yeah. you a Red Vine guy? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Over Twizzlers, big time. James Logan High School, the major high school here okay. in town. Okay. Can you tell me their mascot and their team colors? I should know that. Uh, I can sing the alma mater. I graduated in 1977. Well, come on. The colors are red and black. Yeah. Red. And the mascot is, it's the horse. It's the, yeah. what is that? Rhymes with bolt. I don't know, the superhero? <laughs> Superheroes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that works. Oh, oh. That works. <laughs> we know him. All right. <laughs> the superheroes. Colts, red, black, and white. Got it. And who was James Logan? James Logan. Now that's. <laughs> Come on. You, you got graduated. me. You got me there, man. I don't know who the the history of the name behind James Logan. How did Union City get its name? Union. He's the famous guy. Uh, just guessing. Mr. Union. Yeah, you can see that, Mr. Union. Yeah. They united Alvarado and Dakota together. Well, that is true, but that's <laughs> not where the name came from. Oh, okay. I really don't know. Union City. I don't know. Our old conquistadors in the 18, 1900s decided to put the cities together. True or false, Union City was actually named after a steamship in Sacramento. Whoa, that sounds like... That sounds like good information already, so I'm gonna have to go with true. You're going with true! I'm gonna just go with No, what do you I'm guys say? False. 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 Oh, no. It's true! Yeah, oh, see, look, y'all yeah. not from the city like that. Oh, cool. Come on! How, how about that? We throw you a curveball. Union City was actually named after the Horner Brothers steamship, the Union, which was up in Sacramento back in the 1850s. It later became New Haven. Then New Haven became Alvarado, and Alvarado and Dakota combined in the late 50s when they incorporated, and they went back to their roots, and they called it Union City. So there you go. Gassia? I, I love it. I mean, Frank, every time you do Zip Trip Trivia, I learn something. Even though I think, look, I grew up in the Bay. I know all about this place. I learn things from you every time we go on the road. All right. Thank you so much, Frank Malico. We also learned things from our viewers. It goes, boy, you guys responded. When we asked you to weigh in for your favorite places to go, favorite things to eat in Union City. Let's pop up a list of our KTVU favorites here. Our viewers' choice for best place for family fun includes Charles F. Kennedy Park, iFly, of course, that's indoor skydiving. Union Landing and Quarry Lakes Regional Recreation Area. So many people waited. Can I just add my own? You know me, I'm a sucker for a farmer's market. Come back tomorrow, Saturday morning, you'll see the farmer's market at Old Alvarado Park. So again, our zip trip is well underway, shining a light on Union City. The sun is out in a big way. And coming up in a minute, we are going to take you through all the delicious places to eat and drink in this gorgeous Alameda County City. So our taste of the town is coming up next. We will get to feature some of the most delicious things our South Castaneda found. Stay with us. Look, from, from super high to like street food and everything in between, Sal has you covered. That's coming up next on our zip trip to gorgeous Union City. I mean, you've heard Vance Joy do this on the radio, but frankly, I think these young men and women do it even better. We're listening and looking at the Eternity Band, proud Union City products. These are middle and high schoolers who came out and they have been playing for us all morning long. What a gorgeous morning. The crowd is growing. People swinging by with their coffee. We brought the whole band out, the whole KTVU band, right? We have Sal Castaneda, Frank Malicote, Claudine Wong. We are living and loving Union City right now. And Sal, we're gonna to go to you for one of our Zip Trip favorites. I was just given something amazing. I know you're jealous. It's a Golden State Warriors tote bag. And we could pack quite a picnic in this baby, Sal. Oh, my goodness. Really? Oh, well, yes. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it because, you know, uh, I know that you're, uh, I know you are honest, Gassia. You're kind of one of those Warriors fans who pays attention when the going gets good. And I respect that. I'm glad you got it. And I hope that you enjoy it. Now, speaking of enjoying ourselves, look at these bikes behind me. These are so cool. They came over and uh, they're just kind of hanging out. So these guys uh, from Union City here. I want to bring in really quickly one of the people from uh, uh, 
Hippies Brew uh, because, come on in, don't be shy. Tell us your name again. Shayla. Shayla. So I love your coffee. Uh, you have this location, you guys have this location, and also the location on Smith Street. Smith Street yeah. Correct. Smith, and we have one on C Street in Hayward also. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. you, guys are, you guys are famous for your cold brews. Yes. What, do you, what do you have there? I have here a Rick Ross, which is our cinnamon vanilla mocha. And what do you have? I have the Ice of Cocoa, which is a coconut mocha. Like, so, yes. Grown-up chocolate milk, kind of. So yeah. if you come to Union City... And I'm a coffee nut. You know me. you got to come to Hippie's Brew. I went to the one on Smith Street. You can come here to the one at the Pyramid. Either way, I got you hooked up. So, okay. I did go and eat my and drink my way through Union City. And, by the way, I found a lot of good places to eat. And I also found some unexpected things that I didn't think I would find. So, let's take a look at what I did on Taste of the Town. When it comes to Union City, you may not be aware there is more to offer than what you see next to 880 in the strip malls. When you hear Union City, you think of like, what, Century 25 or 880 right there. About a mile away from the freeway, I found the Birdhouse Beer Garden and the Lone Crow Restaurant sharing this space on Smith Street. Here you can order delicious dishes and pair it with a good selection of brews in a spacious outdoor setting. What first drew me to the spot was the beer garden, and when I tasted the food, I knew I had found something. Making the food here is Chef Dean Ramirez, who worked and consulted for some high-profile restaurants all over the country before deciding to come back to his roots. During the pandemic, it was an opportunity to steer away from, you know, the bigger cities, trying to make a bigger impact in the culinary world um, and concentrate on where I came from, which is Union City, like a small town, small community. Um, and I wanted to try to bring a culinary movement out here to kind of bring people outside of Union City to see who we are and what we do here. People seek out the Lone Crow for its Filipino and Hawaiian fusion dishes. The chef told me his vision is to introduce people to his gourmet version of street food, and so far it's a big hit. By far the most popular dish is the mochiko chicken. Which is a ginger uh, marinated chicken 24 hours overnight with garlic, fresh uh, green onions, and then we have scallions in there, um, and then we deep fry that. I got to watch that very dish being prepared and got a taste. Go ahead, try that. It's crunchy and spicy, but not too spicy. When I was in the kitchen, I saw the huge plates of shrimp coming out often accompanied by sides like mac salad. There is also a vegan menu. My favorite is the fried tofu with the guava sauce. The chef made our crew a plate right on the spot. It's uh, mochiko chicken with uh, our house furukake with rice, with our aioli, miso kale salad, sukumono adobo uh, pickles, uh, mac potato salad with our cucumber lomi, kimchi base up. It's sexy. We ate outside in the beer garden, and the food was paired with a crisp, cool calamansi beer, another nod to Filipino culture, served from the birdhouse taps. Everything is made to order here, so this is not fast food, but you can wait it out with a frosty cold one. This partnership between the two businesses is a real hit and not what I expected to find in Union City. Now my expectations have been raised. Cherry turnovers. Across town, it was time for something sweet, and we found the Niles Pie Company. The first customer we saw doesn't come here for the pies at all. She comes for the cinnamon buns. I tried them one time, and now I'm addicted. <laughs> this is a worker-owned business using local organic ingredients. We saw bakers plying their craft, putting the finishing touches on some flaky goodness. As I perused the selection, I saw several freshly made pies and other treats. This is our there, there raspberry is. rhubarb pie. We get um, fresh organic rhubarb in. We cook it here in the shop with just some sugar and vanilla. And then we add fresh raspberries into it and it's got our delicious buttercrumb topping on it. Niles Pie Company also has savory offerings including chicken and beef pot pie, chicken pepper empanadas, quiches and more. And if you like Pop-Tarts growing up, they make an elevated version which you have to try. Sarah Vega says the secret to nearly everything they make here is butter, and lots of it. All right, so they make a lot of fancy pies here, but the apple pie, the classic apple pie, you guys do that really well here too, right? We do. We do a Dutch apple pie this time of year. A little cinnamon, a little uh, clove, brown butter, vanilla. It's delicious. All right, well, uh, you know, uh, there's so many places to eat. As I always like to say to you, Gacia, 
that was not an exhaustive list because I'd still be here eating. There are a lot of places. There's a Mexican restaurant. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff here, but those are places that I found, and I'm really happy to feature uh, those local businesses uh, that are, you know, feeding people in Union City, and uh, I just loved everything I ate, Gracia. Well, you know what? I, I like your all butter and lots of it. I raise a cup of coffee once I get some yes. coffee in here. I raise a cup of coffee to that apple pie. You know, I have to say, Sal, I love it when you and our viewers are on exactly the same path because when we put out the call for people who live in and love Union City to weigh in with some of their favorite places to eat and drink, they picked one of the spots you just featured. So if I can go ahead and pop up that list that we got from our viewers, they headed on over to KTVU.com. Our viewers' choice top restaurants in beautiful Union City Birdhouse Beer Garden. There you go. 27 people weighing in. So Sal Castaneda, you're in agreement with them. That was the top choice among Union City viewers who took our poll. Other top restaurants included Mexico Tipico, Baldi's Cafe, which I have been to, and it is an amazing family restaurant. We had a meal that we will not soon forget there. Also, Chaplin Sports Bistro. So many delicious places to go, eat and drink, you know, with your sweetheart, with your whole family, even just on your own with a good book. It's amazing what Union City has to offer. All right, let's feature some more amazing people because look you talk to any mayor and they say it's the people in this town that make it what it is and Claudine Wong you are about to talk with a woman who has a mission that I mean just goes straight to my heart because you and I both know if you don't look good you can't feel good and you're, you're talking with someone who's doing that for so many yes Yes, 100%, Gassia. This is an amazing effort that's being uh, taken on by Sophia Dangerfield and her band of volunteers, and really incredible. We're at Community Closet, right across from where you are. Sophia, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I wanted to talk about Community Closet because it really is community helping community. Thank you. Um, so the Community Closet is really a pa my passion of sustainability, fashion, and community all combined together. Um, so the program is essentially a free clothing program. Um, we have shoes, accessories, um, free resources, books, all for the community by the community. And so you've helped hundreds of families. And as we look through and your volunteers here, this is just a, just a glimpse of what you guys do. Sure. Tell me about your story and why you wanted to start this. Sure. So I'm a former uh, Union City resident, born and raised, went to Logan High School. And um, I just really, during the pandemic, saw a greater need of clothing and, um, you know, free accessible clothing, free resources. And so uh, we began the community closet and it's continuing to grow uh, more and more each event. And free for anyone who wants to come in here. I want to go over to this jeans table as we kind of take a look around at all of the things that are, are happening. Uh, and uh, as we come back to what we're talking about, when we're talking about clothes and free clothes and, and the need that you're meeting, we're talking about when people donate yeah. to give as if you were receiving. Yes. You look at this and you wouldn't know that we were in a high end <laughs> store just, you know, shopping until yeah. we drop. So we also want the community closet to feel it's an, it's an, such an incredible experience of emotion, social. As we dress every day, we want to feel good about ourselves. And that's what the community closet is, this experience of a store, of the way it looks, the way you feel, providing service for our community members um, to have that. That is priceless. And, and we have, uh, we're almost out of time, but the people behind you in, in terms of, as we turn around to your volunteers, just give me a, a glimpse of who they are, because we want to make sure they get sure, a Sure, sure. So thankfully to all my volunteers, here we have um, Dr. Ulaswitz. She's actually my <laughs> former college professor, my mentor from graduate school and supporter for over a decade. Um, we have Stephen here, who's also uh, been a, a supporter for the last decade with me as well of community outreach. And Aaron is the program coordinator here at Studio 11, who's been a huge supporter as well. Well, thank you guys for all you do. Thank you for all you thank do. You. July 30th, you have an event coming so up? So July 30th, we'll be here 9 to 1 at Studio 11 Union City. And you can bring clothes you can and you can shop for clothes. bring your donations and shop for free as much as you'd like. Amazing work that you're doing. Thank really you so tremendous. Much. Such a privilege to be able to chat with you today and the work they're doing at Community Closet really you can't even put words on what they do for people not just with physical items but emotionally as well. Gassia, really tremendous work. Yeah I mean she's changing lives all the volunteers there are changing lives what a great spotlight Claudine Wong thank you so much I mean look clothes are one important part of the equation right but so are jobs so is health so are a lot of things many people have an abundance of but so many people don't have hardly enough of so coming up next time 
so happy. We're going to talk with a longtime volunteer, the head of Union City Centro de Servicios, about everything that's available to the people in need here in this community. And as we continue our zip trip here in gorgeous Union City this morning, look, when I saw these babies ride by, I thought we don't have room in the garage for that. This is not BMX. This is not mountain biking. These are low rider bicycles, a uniquely Union City thing. Our Southcast today to giving us the thumbs up. Are you going to ride that to the KTV studios on Monday morning? We'll see. Stay with us. Things you'll only find in Union City coming up on our zip trip. of Eternity Band here in Union City. They have been playing strong all morning long. We're here at the Dancing Ladies Fountain right next to the pyramid. The crowd is growing. It's a nice, mellow Friday morning. People with their coffee, just listening, taking in all the sights and sounds. We're going to talk with the band leader in a minute, but I can't say this enough. Look, I am the mom of two little boys who grew up in the school band starting in second grade. Trumpet, trombone in my living room, and these young men and women are doing it all, right? Singing, musicians. We're going to talk to these middle and high schoolers in just a minute here as we focus a great golden light on beautiful Union City. And when we talk about Union City, so much of it is about the people and the people who give of themselves to help others. I am so happy to welcome to our zip trip Jaime Jaramillo. You are a longtime volunteer, head of Centro de Servicios, and you provide help in a lot of ways to the people of Union City. Thanks for being with us. Well, thank you very much for having us. Now, we, we just saw Claudine Wong. She, she's featuring an organization that, that helps people look their best. And, you know, you can't feel good if you don't look good. Um, exactly. Centro de Servicios is really kind of a whole wraparound, a big hug from the community. Tell me what you offer. Well, we do everything that needs to be done in order to help the community. We have a community uh, that uh, needs help, yeah. especially now with the COVID, you know, yeah. the dire times that we're going through right now. So we do everything we can do yeah. to help. And we're talking food, we're talking clothes. Exactly. Medical care, health care. Exactly. Well, we don't do that. We'd refer that to medical care. You're the important link. But we do have the referrals and we do have the partners to send people to. Yeah. What's it been like these past two years for you? It's been challenging. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the food distribution has increased tremendously. Yeah. Uh, it's been, I don't know, instead of uh, 150, now it's 300 people in line. Yeah. And that's every Tuesday that we do the food distribution. Yeah. And nobody, nobody goes away without having yeah. been served. What do those parents say? I imagine you meet some people who are asking for help for the first time. There are many, especially now because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, the pandemic has uh, impacted everyone, you know. Uh, and yes, uh, we see a lot of people that have, for the first time, are standing in line. And that's challenging for them. Yeah. And for us, it's kind of, uh, we, we need to serve, and that's what we're doing anyway. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, nobody goes away without being served at Centro. It strikes me sometimes, and as I was driving into Union City today, I came down through Hayward. Um, you know, we're in the middle of multi-million dollar communities, right? Mm -hmm. And most people don't think of need in places like the Bay Area. What do you say to those people who say, really, people going hungry in my hometown? <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing that that happens all the time. Yeah. Uh, we do see those families and people are challenging those families. Other people that said, we don't have, but they have. I come there in line. Well, we don't know what the needs are. Yeah. We don't question the needs. Yeah. We know that they just stand in line. Yeah. Uh, it's because they're in the need of something, yeah. and so we provide that. Yeah. So we don't challenge anyone. We don't ask anyone for identification or yeah. show me your bills and that kind of thing. No, we don't. You know what I call that? Unconditional love. Exactly. That's like, what we do. I, I love that. And that's what I tell my little boys. Even when you screw up, mommy's yeah. still going to love you. Yeah. And you're giving unconditional love to your community. What yeah. I love about what you do is that you also take the long view because you say you're helping to keep teens out of trouble, keep kids out of gangs. I mean, mm. how, how does a hot meal or, or, or a clean outfit help that not happen down the road? Well, we do see a lot of uh, people that are in need of clothing, yeah. uh, especially the young generation. We're talking about youth. Yeah. Um, they come to Centro and they're looking for a job. Uh, they don't have the shoes, they don't have the clothing to wear for the um, interviews. Yeah. So we provide that. Yeah. Uh, we also see some homeless that come in and they need clothing. We provide that. There is no questions asked. Yeah. Everyone is being served. Yeah. And you are right. It's, it's a labor of love. Yeah. That's what we do. How many years have you been with Central? Oh, my goodness. 
20 plus years. 20 plus. Just, yeah. just, just think, you know, the, the, those, those little boys you helped one day are now hopefully, you know, grown men helping their own communities. Actually, they are. We have a volunteer, a core of volunteers of about 15 or 20. And those are people that used to come yeah. to Centro yeah. because they're in need. And now they're helping us yeah. provide for others. That's that unconditional love you're spreading. Jaime Jaramillo with Centro de Servicios. Thank you so much for joining us and for all the good work you do in your community. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, another way that I think people feel that their lives are enriched is when they take up music and when they get to share that music. Frank Malicote, they're sharing an amazing gift. I mean, we are shining a spotlight on a pretty incredible band this morning. Uh, we are. They're called the Eternity Band. It's actually four bands in one. This is the uh, seventh and eighth graders, ages 11 through 13, and they are just fabulous. This is called Flight of the Silverbird. And if my photographer Keith can work his way around here, we're going to talk to the sound engineer who is a junior at James Logan High School and plays piano. And his name is Aaron Q. Tell us about the band, Aaron. So the Eternity Band is a student band and we are run on a, like a democratic system. So we basically pick the songs we enjoy. And we, as you can see, we have so many keyboards here. It's because like, we can produce any sound you'd imagine. And it's, and, and it's high tech. I mean, you get your iPhone working away here too, right? <laughs> yeah. It's the, the phone over here is playing the background track, which has some of the instruments that we don't have. Like, uh, like the drum set, we don't have, so we just have on the background track. What's yeah. it like to play the songs you love? And I mean, you guys uh, have classical and uh, Olivia Rodrigo and everything in between, right? Yeah, it's, it's actually really fun. We got to play the things like like we have a sheet and like whenever there's a new a ballot, like we have a ballot and like the people just vote. And then usually it turns out well. All right. Well, they're actually playing at the Alameda County Fair this summer, among other places. They're very busy, Gassi, and they sound terrific. Back to you. Back up again, a great big thank you to members of the Eternity Band. All right, coming up, we're going to showcase something that a lot of you may have heard about, but have you ever seen it in person? Do you want to learn more about MMA? Guess what? You're in luck. Because we have some young men and women here in Union City doing just that. We will talk about how the love of MMA runs deep for so many, and we'll showcase all the different forums as we continue the zip trip. The sun is coming out here in Union City. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Zip Trip featuring people doing things I cannot do in Union City, MMA, Mixed Martial Arts. We have the crew from Dragon's Den in Union City out here showing us their best stuff. I'm happy to have the head of Dragon's Den MMA with us. Good morning to you, Jeff Makalolo Oi. I mean, when people think Mixed Martial Arts, tell us a little bit about what we're seeing live here. What we do is a traditional art called Kaji Kembo from Hawaii. First Mixed Martial Arts started in 1947. So we do a little bit of boxing, we do jujitsu, we do some escrima, there's some people over there doing some stick fighting, there's some weapon disarm. So we train for the street and we adjust it for sport if they're going to compete. I mean, there's a lot of discipline involved and that, that's why a lot of parents get their young ones into martial arts and MMA. Definitely. I started training when I was six years old, uh, going almost 42 years now. And now we have kids starting as early as four years old. Yeah, and, and they go on up to how old? How old are your oldest students? Oh, I've had students training in their 50s, even into their 60s. I like it. I yeah. like it. 70s, 80s, let's go. Well, Jeff Makalolo Oi, thank you for bringing your team with us here. I mean, Union City is going strong. MMA, 25 years did I hear? Yes, 25 years this year we've been in Union City. Congrats. First five years we were in the garage, just like Apple and Google. There you go. But now we have our own building, 5,400 square feet. We got a ring, we got a cage, we got wrestling mats. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Jeff, thank you so much. Congratulations. 25 years here's to 25 50 75 more you are the heart of Union City so many people have come out today to share their talent share their art and their grace their coffee I mean it's been a wonderful morning and we are by no means done we appreciate your joining us here in Union City we have the whole team out and guess what guys we are packing stuff up in trucks and heading out again our next zip trip takes us to Benicia and I know that you love Benicia Claudine you're a daughter of Benicia if you love I Benicia <laughs> let us know on ktvu.com Give us your best places for your family to hang out, your favorite places to eat. It's all at ktv.com slash zip trip. So again, Benicia's up next. After that, we head down south to Santa Clara. After Santa Clara, we will find you in Pacifica. Then meet me in Dublin, and then we will wrap things up later this summer in Martina. So again, it's been a gorgeous morning here in Union City. I hope you all have had a chance to come out 
and just really get your fill of this East Bay City that really does tend to fly under the radar a little bit. Again, we've had a blast and we thank you for your hospitality. I'm gonna go find a place to fill this coffee cup. Union City, you did great. Thanks for hosting us and have a great Friday. Cheers to you.